Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to a wonderful Wednesday night. It's time for Ask an Engineer. It's me, Lady Ada, the engineer. With me is Mr. Lady Ada. We're broadcasting here from the Adafruit factory, which is not on fire, yeah. uh, but it is full of amazing equipment that does all the testing and shipping and manufacturing of the electronic goodies that we write code for and make tutorials and videos about. And uh, right now the factory is asleep, so it's time for one hour of fun, news, new products, videos, and more from the Maker community. We might even have a special guest from Particle if his plane gets here on time. Right. Uh, but we've got an exciting show for you tonight, despite or because of that. What's on tonight's show, Mr. Lady? Let's on kick it off. On tonight's show, the code is Particle ML, celebrating a guest tonight that we're going to have. Literally just landed and in a car on their way here right now. Particle ML will get you 10% off in the Adafruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. Everything except for gift certificates, Adabox, and Code Academy courses. It supports us, an open source hardware company here in New York City. When you purchase something, it helps us keep the lights on. We have no loans, no venture capital. We're still in business. When you purchase something, save a buck or two and keep this company going. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady will talk about the projects that were on the show this week. Got a little bit of preview from John Park Workshop, Make Code Minute. Got some Python on hardware, some time travel, a little bit of help wanted. Got some 3D printing with a really cool video this week. Got some factory footage from right here in the Adafruit New York City manufacturing facility. We got some new products. We'll answer your questions. We do that over on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. Join all 15,000 of us. Got some top secret. We're going to give away something at the end of the show. All that and more on, you guessed it, Ask an Engineer. Yay! Okay, so uh, the plan is when I have to get the door and let someone in or deal with other stuff, I'll just uh, I'll cut to a video. Yeah. And that'll give us a couple minutes. We've got so we're, some great we're gonna, videos. We're going to go in and out of order this okay, week. Okay, cool. That's the plan. Um, but the, the thing that's the same is you can save some money. Particle ML is the code. When you check out, you can get free stuff. Lady Ada, what are the free deals that we're doing right now? I'm glad you asked. We have a few freebies for $99 orders or more. You get a free Perma Proto half side breadboard. Makes a wonderful stocking stuffer for your engineer friends. They can take their solderless breadboard projects and solder them onto a Perma Proto. One night in or more, you get free UPS ground shipping. And by the way, uh, we do recommend UPS ground shipping, although within a couple of days, the cutoff for Christmas delivery will be here, especially if you're on the West Coast. So just watch out for that. You might want to upgrade to three second or uh, overnight delivery, uh, depending on your location. Uh, give yourself a couple extra days when shipping uh, holiday packages that you need before Christmas. And then tune in down to more, you get a free uh, Circuit Playground Express, our all-in-one development board with LED sensors, capacitive touch buttons, all driven by a Cortex M0 processor that can run Arduino, CircuitPython, Code.org, CS Discoveries, MakeCode, MakerBlocks, TinyGo, MicroLisp, and many other wonderful languages. It's so easy to get started with electronics and you don't need to do any soldering at all. Okay, there are some shipping deadlines. Make sure you check our website. If you don't, you will not get things. You still have a little bit of time, but I would suggest getting something with the most reliable forms of shipping. That would be UPS. Uh, Postal, I wouldn't risk it. DHL International, you'll probably be okay. This is risky, yeah. risky, risky, risky. Um, and then also a little bit of a special announcement. So every time we run all the Adabot subscriptions, there are folks who move or they cancel their credit card or all sorts of things. So we have like a couple of subscriptions left. We so do. if you go to adabox.com right now, sign up for Adabox, you will get one uh, shipped in the next couple days. Yes. And that means you'll get it in time for the holidays. Correct. So um, this is live on uh, streaming Wednesday. right now but uh this but, may not be true by friday yeah when you watch this and it doesn't have a live button it might not be true right so i would uh i would take a break right now i would go to uh, i'd open up a tab yeah in a browser perhaps okay. what do you um, i'd use a telephone telephone that has okay. internet access telephone. And I would go to adabox.com not like a rotary phone sign up yeah okay and then if you're in new york city uh same day delivery before 11 a.m just make sure you check out and if it's an option you'll see it on checkout Show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady Ada, who's Lots on the show Lots of tell? people. We had a whole bunch of people. People were really, were, you know, there's a this is like right before the holidays, we have a little bit of a sprint where everybody wants to get their projects done. So a lot of stuff uh, we got released or this week. Um, Noe and Pedro uh, released their uh, Watchmen Sister Night Goggles Guide. Uh, we did an awesome video shoot um, as well, which we will show the video later. Uh, we got a guide, takes our normal goggles, NeoPixel uh, goggle project, 
We upgraded it to CircuitPython, added a rotary encoder so you can change modes and select and, and twist and stuff. Um, and a 3D printed case on top that makes it look like the Night Owl goggles from Watchmen so you can uh, do your sister night cosplay. Phil B, no sorry, Phil B didn't show his old computer. He might next week. I'll cross it out. Erin uh, showed off her unicorn stocking. That's a guy that she got uh, live today and said that we'll, we'll show that off. Also check out learn.ifer.com to make a, uh, a crafting project where you craft your own sparkly LED unicorn uh, stocking with the eye is like rainbows and then it's got like a jewel horn and it's purple and it's a great way to uh, decorate a circuit playground or decorate your stocking or both. Um, Melissa showed off uh, a new page that she's got for the um, Charlie Bonnet, Charlie Plex Bonnet and Breakout Guides for how to play animated GIFs on uh, the bonnet so you can like do little cool LED animations. JP did a demo for uh, the next guide he's writing up on using ANCS, which is the Apple Notification Center service, uh, which lets you take uh, notifications that come in on your iOS device, like your phone or your tablet, and then those get transmitted over Bluetooth, normally to something like an Apple Watch, but this time it's to a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit with a TFT gizmo, which by the way, you would get if you had your Adabox subscription, so that's why you should subscribe. Um, does an upcoming guide, so we've previewed that. It's a cool demo for the kind of technology you can do with Bluetooth. Uh, Katni um, showed off her LED wreath guide. She worked out a whole bunch of different animations that you can do, and she's documenting this guide. Uh, it is festive LED action spirit going on over at Katniville. Um, Scott got a jewel scope. It's a uh, device that's used to do um, very fast data acquisition of very low current devices. So you can, be, for example, tell how much current your Bluetooth device is using and, and whether you should go into sleep mode or like how far apart the wireless spikes are. It's kind of neat stuff. So um, as Scott does more with uh, Bluetooth development, he'll be using that. Um, and showed off uh, a Threadripper uh, CPU and graphic card and motherboard that she'll be using. That's how she gets so many guides done and so many right. tutorials written and she's got such a fast CPU, nothing will stop her. Amy and Kate came by, they um, did a project uh, at the university, which was a robotic sculpture worn by a dancer that uses uh, breath and movement sensors to like have these robotic like wing arms. And this amazing dancer um, had like a spoken word while music was playing. And it's, uh, it's about like robotics and feminism and nature and, and sensing, and it's very neat. Gonna, we're going to post a video. I'm really glad that the, the show is recorded because um, I was getting text messages from our guests from Particle that uh, bags are delayed at the airport. Yeah. And then I, then I got a call. Uh, we have to call our alarm company. Uh, when you manage a, a, a facility like ours. Once there's, a, there's an alarm going off like every 10 minutes. Yeah, they're just like, there's no problem, but uh, you should have your alarm company check out. Like I'm, every time it gets cold in New York, like phone lines start. <gasps> yeah, that's true. Like, it crackling. is one. You're right. So it's it has been in January. It's right on December, time. Yeah. So anyways, I'm glad that was recorded because I, I want leave. to see that. Yeah, I can't, I can't leave the five block. Radius. We can't leave. Okay. Um, but uh, we'll post up that project. Uh, yeah, we'll, but we'll post it up on the blog, the video, because it's cool and they're looking for sponsorship. Uh, Duke uh, had a Santa hat, he had a trinket, he had some LEDs. Combine them together, blinking yeah. LED Santa hat with conductive thread, amazing. Richard A is doing more experimentation with ESP8266 modules, this time using the Tasmoda firmware, which is kind of like an all-in-one firmware that handles MQTT and IoT sensor node stuff. It's kind of neat because there's like no coding, it's just, it's just kind of a plug and play IoT firmware system, which I think is kind of interesting. And Drew, um, brought uh, showed off the Beagle MakeCode Arcade port. So MakeCode Arcade runs on the Raspberry Pi natively. It runs on like the Pi Badge and the Pi Gamer natively. But uh, soon it will also be released for the Beagle Bone Pocket as well as uh, the Beagle Bone Black. So uh, nobody will be left out of being able to make cool handheld or arcade style games. Okay, as part of our Adafruit Live series of shows tonight all works out, Renan will be by. Renan is from Particle. So we'll be talking about all things Particle. Um, they use the Feather form factor. Um, They're Renan doing has, some machine learning Renan stuff. Renan has some really cool uh, projects with machine learning, which is cool, though, is we can jump to a bunch of the show, and then when Brandon arrives, we'll come back to this. We'll uh, hop over. Okay. So JP's show is this week. 
don't forget. And then next week, JP will be doing the unboxing. But let's do a little bit of a preview. Here is the Apple notification service that uh, you can see in early beta. This was just like our hello world. So you can see. Just the text? Just the text. But we're like, let's, let's dress this yeah. up a little bit. Yeah, and then, you know, later on, and this is, we, when we do stuff, we do all of our software development live, so you can see it all. Then later on, it's a little preview. And then here's a hide and seek. Okay, and uh, the time is working out pretty good. It looks like our guest is going to be here in a few moments. So let's uh, do a Make Code Minute while we get set up. Make Code Minute. It's time for a Make Code Minute. On today's Make Code Minute today, what I'd like to do is show you how you can use the random number generator built inside of Make Code with a specific range of values in order to change the color of NeoPixels to different numbers within a subsection of the hue color range. So hue is the, the alternate to using RGB that we can use. And it's really nice because it's a color wheel that runs from zero to 255 values, but it's a 360 degree circle essentially of color values. And so what I've got here is, uh, let me show you a demonstration first, right here in the simulator. Every time I press, let's say the A button, I am changing the color of the NeoPixels to different uh, blue and green values. When I press B, it's different red and pink and purple values. And every time I either reset the board or press the slide switch one way or another, I'm getting this slightly broader range, which includes some reds, oranges, uh, and yellows into greens. So how do we do this? What I have is a function that I created, and I call it color pick. And you can see here, this is a function that has a requirement of two integer values, which are called min and max. Uh, that have to be supplied when you call the function. And what happens when we call that function is that we have this for loop that runs through the NeoPixels numbered zero through nine. And for each one of those, it sets the color to the hue value that is a random number selected from within the range that I've given it. Uh, and so you can see when we start, that range is from zero to 60 on the color wheel which encompasses red up through some of these yellows and greens. Then when I press the A button, I'm calling it with a range of 100 to 155. And so that, as it turns out, is these sort of greens and blues. And when I press B, I get 200 to 255, which is closer to the end of the color wheel, which is where it's the purples and pinks and, and reds there. Uh, and so that is a really cool way that you can have an alternative to just running a full set of rainbow colors where everything under the sun is in there, uh, but instead have little subsections of the color wheel, which I think look really nice. And so that's how you can use a range of random numbers to set your NeoPixels on the Circuit Playground Express right inside of Make Code. And that is your Make Code Minute. All right. Okay, so, a wild particle has appeared. Yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> matching shirts. Uh, so JP <laughs> show will be tomorrow, and then of course uh, on Wednesday or next week unboxing. So let's uh, let's get back to business here. Okay. Welcome, Brandon. How you doing? Hey. Hi, I'm great. I'm great. How are y'all? Did Thanks you just so get off a plane? I just got off a plane and yeah. came straight to y'all. Okay. So excited. Outstanding. Yeah. Okay. Um, so tell Welcome. us a little bit about yourself. So I, uh, I work for Particle. I uh, lead our developer relations team. And what we are primarily responsible for is working with our developer community, helping people understand how to work with Particle products and do IoT stuff in general. It's a job that allows me to play with lots of fun stuff from Adafruit in particular, yeah. which I really love. Uh, and also, our team is responsible for working with our engineering teams and taking developer feedback back into our products and so help like, make them hey, better. Hey, we so. think you should make this kind of product or you should add this kind of support and then you'll you'll kind of do that merging of brains. A absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I get to experiment and play with fun, cutting edge okay, kind of stuff. Okay, cool. Too. I did yeah. have a question. So when uh, Particle is tweeting about you were going to be here, 
they they use this picture. Is this a project that you made? Is this something? Yes, you this do? is a project. Yeah. So our our director community. This is a project that I did. Actually, it was in Make Magazine in January of this oh, yeah? year. I believe can't hard to believe it was this year. Uh, but this is actually a. I got three different just ten dollar RC cars from Walgreens, and added three different particle xenons to them to make them mesh controlled RC swarm bots. Cool. So I had one one car that was receiving signals from the from the cheapo RC controller yeah. and it was sending UDP messages to the others and causing them to all sort of move at the same time together. Got so it. All right, fun. well I'm going to ask you a couple of questions just to get sure. people spun up because there's folks they're beginners Mm -hmm. They don't know what like even IoT stuff is, and then there's really advanced folks that they're like they're probably using Particle sure. in their their scooter deployment somewhere. Right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, how would you describe Particle? It's it's hardware and it's software. It's not just a board. It's not just a service. It's it's a combination of the two. It is absolutely because and, and the reason why we we made that choice. I know you all have had Zach on the show before, and he's he's talked about some of this. But the reason why we we like to take that approach as to being sort of an end-to-end -end IoT platform is because we recognize that for most people, the hardware piece is, is, it may be an intimidating piece, but it's just the beginning. Even if you've never done IoT development before, it's really just the beginning from, you know, if you're building something with connectivity baked in, you want to do something with that. Yeah. If you have a Wi-Fi or a cellular module on a device, obviously you're trying to gather data for a reason. And so we try to make sure that people have a place to go. We don't just give them a Wi-Fi chip and say, okay, you're on your own. Yeah. Um, you know, we give them a place for that data to go and then provide integrations for actually getting their services into or yeah, their data like into third-party services. Yeah, lots yeah, of absolutely. Stuff. Yeah, we, we get people started. So we get the hardware side. We have all the code and libraries. And then we have like Adafruit.io, which is a free yeah, service for makers. Absolutely. But it yeah. is training wheels. We tell people if, if you're going to try to deploy thousands of things go to particle like that, oh, that's, yeah. that's the next step because a absolutely yeah because yeah. there's so much that goes into it and then there's firmware updates over the air stuff and then particle takes care of all this yeah stuff. yeah which is really cool because you know we i spent a lot of time obviously in prototyping and so it's easy to talk to a developer about that case of taking a piece of firmware applying it to a device but then when you talk about taking that one piece of firmware and now putting it on a thousand devices yeah and making sure that when you're applying updates you're not applying updates to a device that is in use yeah. Right, maybe yeah. on something that's moving and needs to not stop yeah. and receive the next time like your, right your scooter just right. something yeah. like breaks and is like for yeah, the next time you're kind of doing something important, it'd be pretty cool to update. Exactly, yeah, those kinds like of things, absolutely. And there's a lot of complexity around that concept of going from one device to one, you know, N plus one devices and what yeah. you're actually managing. A um, little bit of a loaded question, and you can say anything you want. Sure, so, sure. Um, Particle adopted the Feather format. And, yes. Um, the story behind that was uh, Zach visited. And we said, hey, you know, Feather's really we taken off. We drugged him. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, we said, hey, Feather's, Feather really took off. There's all these companies using it. There's all these people using it. Absolutely. It's an open spec. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, we wanted to make some, like the previous size was like, okay, you have Arduino shields. And now they seem like, you know, pizza boxes are big. Abs yeah, so absolutely. So we wanted something light, easy, um, open. And, uh, you know, we came up with Feather. And uh, he said, yeah, you know what? We're coming up with some new boards mm -hmm. soon. Let's do Feather. So how has it been using Feather as the, the format for for particle. It's been awesome. There's a couple of it's it's been awesome for me as a as an engineer as a developer, A, because it gives me an entire ecosystem of feather compatible devices. Yeah, you don't have, have to work like with. go ask someone at the company to make a GPS thing. A absolutely you not. Could yeah, just, yeah. You could just like, hey, I got a GPS thing. I kinda yeah, miss absolutely. the mustache though. I mean like that was cool. Oh, we <laughs> did the, the little mustache lipo charger yeah, that we had. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. like I was like, that's one way to do it, but you, now it's built in. So, no, so right. you're you're cobbling together a lot of prototypes. So for you you have an entire library of like whatever you can imagine Which is, probably is a feather wing. You want phenomenal. motor driver, Absolutely. you get the motor yeah. driver, you want to get servo control, you want to get a little display with a joystick, all those things. Yeah, precisely. And that's actually, it's been a really nice exploration piece for me to actually look at an area too where we actually need to improve firmware libraries in our ecosystem. So a lot of times if when y'all release a new feather device, I'll make sure that we actually have support for it in our libraries ecosystem or we can get there soon like you know, one example earlier this year, we added all of the um, Cricut libraries after y'all released the Cricut, mm -hmm. um, the Featherwing version of the Cricut yeah. uh, platform, so that people can actually have that same experience of popping in the device in and going forward with yeah. it, which is really nice. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. I also, um, I was just tired of like, I had to keep making the same, you know, it's like, there's so many different wireless chips and I felt like they were all kind of similar enough that we could have the similar pin out and the same kind of accessories in that way. I didn't have to like keep making them over and over again. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and another thing that's been really cool about it is it allows us, because all three of those 
devices, the Argon with Wi-Fi, Boron with cellular, and the Xenon, which is the mm -hmm. mesh only device all three of those have this exact same feather pinout yeah and so you're popping and you know, when you're working in prototyping it's not an issue to go from one of those to the yeah. other it's really nice cool so um, nice job y'all love that i well, love that you know Yay. we we make things and we and we know if we do a good job um you know it's like if if, if you love someone send them free you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like if we did a good job we would see this no pun intended take flight and yeah, other people yeah. would be able to do it i think Seed has some, SparkFun has some. Yeah, absolutely. So, all some. Yeah, so, so yeah. pretty much everyone said, okay, this is a good format. Mm -hmm. And um, we have github.com slash Adafruit slash awesome dash feather. And it's a huge list of hundreds oh, now. Oh, I didn't know y'all had an awesome list. Yeah, we have an awesome list on Feather. And then we great. have an awesome okay. list on um, Circuit. Python, mm -hmm. which those tend to, to uh, overlap a little bit because a lot of people are like, okay, I don't want to get tied to an IDE. Absolutely. I know Python, mm -hmm. and you, know, you can even run Circuit Python on um, the particle boards if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. I know. It's, yeah, there's yeah. a couple of tutorials out there about yeah. that as well. It's cool. So as far as like the just one last thing on the, the feather mm -hmm. stuff. So as far as like the workflow for the the customers, and don't tell me anybody specific or even for you. Sure. So is it the idea of something comes in like okay, we want to have a uh, a bicycle ride share thing. We need GPS, we need Wi-Fi, we need Bluetooth, mm -hmm. we need cellular, we need other things. And is is the team um, or the companies are they using Particle to like make a prototype of all this stuff, and then eventually they'll reduce it down to something smaller. But this gets them in prototype phase. It gets them in prototype quickly, it, instantly. Yeah, almost, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And and for the customers that are and yeah, everybody starts with that that idea. Same as same as I think we all do. We have an idea. We want to see something working quickly. Build that POC as they then sort of when they when they go to scale with it or go to production, they may be working on a different sort of form factor. So we actually have different versions. Yeah, the pick and place modules. modules. We have the like pick that. and place yeah. modules as well. And when they're smart. moving to the modules. There is slightly different pen out. Maybe there's more pins at their disposal, but it runs the same. You know, our our version of our toss runs the exact same real time operating system. Well, same thing people did with like our, the next. Arduino, right? Like you start with the Absolutely. chip, yeah. and then you're like, okay, well now that I've got the the prototype working, I can go just to the raw module, the raw chip, and then yeah. of course you can get a bigger package or a faster version. Right, right. But still, basically, you've got your code prototyped, and then you know people always go through revisions of hardware, but. Trying to, to trying to smooth that path because hardware revisions just take so long. It I mean, really they take is. A month. Yeah. yeah, You know, you just change like one little thing on a PCB. Well, it's going to take you two or three weeks until you get that revision on your hands. Absolutely, it's a long time compared to software. Yeah, absolutely. And That's then, for sure. um, you know, you have Lady Eighty here, and you also have a, a pretty big community of people who make uh, feathers and feather wings. There's a Hackaday contest right now. Um, yes. Yeah, that ends, I think, flight. next week, right? Yeah, 53 yeah, yeah. entries already. It's awesome. one of the, the fastest ones. Is there yeah. any, because um, you can ask, you know, to, to the community and to Lady, is there any feather mm -hmm. wings or sensors that um, that you haven't been able to get your hands on or you're something? you're like, well, it would be cool if somebody designed. Yeah, Ooh. is there any? And Ooh, you don't gosh. have to answer now if you don't know. I'll think about it. Yeah, yeah. I'll think about it. We think that we've one, yeah. got a lot of coverage on a lot of things. I'm sure, oh, yeah, y'all do. Yeah, but, definitely. But if you can think of something, um, you know, one of the things that we like to do is find the latest and greatest sensors mm -hmm. and try to get them as fast as we can on uh, feather wings. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we just had Panasonic out here. We had their grid eye, and that's a thermal uh Nice camera, yeah, yeah, and with machine learning, which is my segue to my next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you can do neat stuff with people detection on the the edge, as they say, instead of sending all that to the cloud. Yeah. I think people are like, you know what? It'd be nice not to store all this people stuff absolutely on cloud. So can absolutely. we do it locally? Mm -hmm. So I think you'll probably see something with machine learning and some of these sensors with particle. Coming that's up. awesome. That's oh yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. something you were working on. Um, I grabbed this off. Uh, you have a tutorial. Yes. That you just released TF Light for. Particle. Yes. So I know that y'all have been working with the Google team, uh, the TensorFlow team, for the last several months. Uh, we have as well. It's actually one of the fun things that I get to do is explore some of the cutting edge, not to reuse the term yeah. edge again, uh, stuff out there. And machine learning is definitely one of those. I've spent uh, really the bulk of my year actually playing with TensorFlow, doing machine learning on single board computers. I actually did some work with a Google Coral yeah. earlier this year and sort of exploring some of their edge TPU stuff. And when I caught wind that the TensorFlow, that Pete Warden, I, I know he was on the show a couple mm -hmm. of months ago, and the team were actually exploring creating a TensorFlow light micro Fork. And um, one of the targets was the NF2284, which is like yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's like, yeah, like we get all the optimizations. We were all, we were all yeah. using it, so it 
like we immediately said, oh great, we can use we can do voice recognition. It, yeah. On uh, on a blue fruit. Like yeah, it's fantastic. And so I've been following a lot of the work that y'all have been doing, iterating over devices, and some of the work that Google has been doing as, as well. And when we sort of when they finally got to a point of having an alpha version of TensorFlow Lite, I was able to sort of get a port working in our library ecosystem and just started exploring some of the things. The differences, I mean, same as it is with you all, the differences between us and you know standard Arduino distribution is not that great. So it was a relatively simple port, but now it's just been going through and exploring yeah. you know, some of the different demos and use cases and trying to figure out you know where can we and I you know the the Google team has also has created a special interest group around TF Lite yeah. Micro and they're meeting monthly and talking about performance and optimizations and there's a whole lot more to dig in there and I'm really excited about where this space is going yeah. because for latency and privacy among other reasons I mean those yeah. are two huge like, drivers for particle this. kind of is the best case scenario where you're doing machine learning on the edge mm -hmm. I mean one of your um, case study is like jacuzzi right like there's yeah there are vats of water with people in it well yeah. you know you don't probably don't want that streaming live to the cloud right right, right you just right, want to know yeah. is there a human in there or is it hot Absolutely. Or is it, and, that, and there's machine learning things that are helpful for that that you can do smart things but you don't have to have an always on high bandwidth connection <clears throat> forever absolutely um to to figure out if if, if a person is in a vat of water mm -hmm. or something. that's just right. like one example yeah yeah mm -hmm. um so it, it'll be neat to see yeah it'll be neat to see the combination because you actually have all the infrastructure you could do stuff on the edge do computation and then when there's information that makes sense to manage on clouds that's right. when you can push it that way when you get a connection or if you get absolutely. a connection. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. When, I, when I've given some talks on this and what I like to say is you, you can use image rec image processing as an example because everybody, when you yeah, mention that, that example, everybody thinks about the privacy implications yeah. of it. But even if you're working on a single board computer, the advantage of, in, of inferencing at the edge is that you're taking instead of that image file and putting it up in the cloud and just hoping that everything is secure from here to there and that it's not being stored. Yeah. But you take the result of the inference and push that up, which is the thing you really wanted in the end. If you're doing emotion detection, you want the emotion, not the raw photo yeah, you don't, and the thing. Yeah, you don't, want the, you, know? per, you don't want the picture of the person. You just want to know the person was there. Absolutely. Like, yeah. like yeah. new yeah. in the hot tub or something. You just want to say, like, <laughs> yeah, like is there a person, does a thermal camera detect this Absolutely. or that? Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. then you know that it never leaves RAM. So. Right, right. Yeah, and it's also it. like it reduces the value of the information, so it's not a, a target. Correct. Like, yeah, like, absolutely. Like the pH yeah. of a of water, who cares? Right. Right. You know, yeah. whatever. But yeah. if it's like live video camera of of people doing stuff, like that's that's a juicier target. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. So, uh, do you want to show any anything off? I do. Yeah. I yeah, actually what do you have. Going on? So related to this, I have a couple of demos. Okay. Um, one and let me plug this in first so i actually have i have one demo but it's actually running on a couple of different devices so i have a a particle boron here right, and i put that okay. i'm going to move to the other okay so let's uh -huh. zoom that in that. there right. we go hold on i we'll think we'll need there. a little bit more and uh I'll, I'll i'll throw some questions at you while you're doing it how much are the borons going for um, if, depending on whether you're getting the LTE or the 2G, there's two different versions, LTE or 2G, 3G. Yeah. The 2G, 3G versions are uh, 49, 39, 49, and the LTE versions okay. are... It's a good deal. Yeah. 59, I think, for the LTE version. Yep. Okay, so this is so demo we have, number two. Yeah, so the Boron is... What I have is a, a mesh network of a couple of different devices that are set up here. So let me just not okay. take that 3 printed case on. And make sure that's coming on. Okay. And I have a particle xenon connected to a 3.5, 3.5 feather TFT feather wing. Yeah. I love this thing. Chunky. It is chunky, but it's, it's so nice. It's such yeah. a nice touch screen too. Okay. And then, all right, so glad I turned that over because I almost spoiled my demo. Okay. Uh, and then I have a third device here, which is a xenon in uh connected to an lsm nine your nine Doff. degrees of doff, doff, doff. device yeah. and what this is listening for this is actually running tensorflow light micro and it's doing it's running the standard gesture detection model that's distributed but one of the things that i've done that is sort of unique to this demo of the particle devices is these three devices are actually in a mesh network okay and so what i'm doing when i'm inferencing is i'm going to detect these gestures and when i pick up on a gesture I'm actually going to display the result on the screen. Yeah. 
Okay. I want a W. Sending a mesh. Yeah, so I'm going to do the wing. I'll do the wing gesture. Oh, yeah, yeah. It does Demo like fail. to. It does. It does like yeah, to we, over sensitize. Yeah, we just measure. we just use this demo when we spell W. Yeah, like, oh, so I've done. And like yeah. halfway through, it's like yeah. oh. Yeah. I did a whole bunch of tuning and tweaking on the yeah, we on gotta the model, go pretty good. the inferencing, and so yeah. So if I make a W gesture with my go hand, go W. W. So if I go, if I do a W, W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that. Yeah, so it actually detects the wing gesture. If I make yeah. the and that'll I'll let that clear for a second. Yeah. Okay. And then if I make a go circle circular motion. Circular. Oh, and I like this little okay. graphics effect you got well, going. Thank you. I figure Green. I had to do something. Right yeah, now. that's nice. <laughs> Okay, ring, right, and then and then the last slope. one is the slope. So I'll go down and over. This one's that one's always the fun one. One's oh, you got, got that one. Great. It's been a whole lot of practicing the rope movements know, yeah. to make sure. Have you learned how to say no the way like no? Yes, no. I've done that. Yeah. Really like a certain kind of no. All right. Well, but what's what's cool demo. about this, and the reason why I, I wanted to put this together with mesh networking, and you could do the same thing with Bluetooth, obviously, because these NRF chips have BLE as well, is. A lot of these machine learning models are taking up, they're gonna take up a lot of flash and they're gonna take up a lot of RAM. And many of the, I think as we get more sophisticated, we're gonna get models that don't leave a lot of room yeah. for other things to happen on the device. Like the uh, the vision detection model with the ArduCam, I think is a 250K model, which is yeah. pretty sizable. We, I mean, if you have the, 840, it's, it has a mega flash, but then you probably have it split in half. And right? we have it split in half. And we have so, spy yeah. flash on the board, so there's a little bit of extra space that's available at your disposal, but it's nice to actually have, you can have purpose built devices that are just doing inferencing yeah. and then deferring to another device on the network to I do the actual processing. I think also we will improve. Processing. Yes, on one hand, the, the models are chunky, but mm -hmm. you know, like with mobile net, like it, they've gotten faster and smaller. Like they're like there's once, once people yeah. get interested and like they spend time on it. Like I have no experience in this stuff, so I'm I'm not a good person to tune models. But there are people out there who are really good at that. They are really, and there's been a ton of work that's happened. I um, the the gesture detection model that's on here. I think the one that they shipped with TensorFlow is about 18k. Yeah. They've actually done some more work. They've released some of the training scripts, and so I've actually started going through adding some new gestures for a demo I'm working on for a conference in January. And I think they've packed it down to about 8K now with, wow. with, and with integer quantization, yeah, which is really nice. So you're moving from 32-bit float quantization to N8 quantization, then you can get smaller models and run faster and all that yeah, good Google stuff. Yeah, Google just released um, Teachable Machine. So yeah, I think that's, the yeah. next first, that's the next good first step to being able to train your own models. Um, one of the things that we want to do, um, and it's just, it's just server time and like our time is there's a core set of voice recognition things that you mm -hmm, can do, mm -hmm. but then adding new words, training new words. Yeah. That's when it gets a little tough because Absolutely. You, you need to record a lot of different sets. Yeah. Then you have to let it grind through. And then when it's over, you're like, okay, let's see what happens. So yeah, we're trying yeah. to make that easier. Um, it is getting easier. Like before, we were playing with Basil and we were doing Docker. Yeah. Oh yeah, that and yeah. Was like, yeah. Yeah. That was like three weekends. But now we yeah. now we have it on Colab. So yeah, yes, you know, Colab absolutely. they came out with that, and that's a little bit better. And then one of the things that we want to do for the gesture detection is having you know we're you know Brian's working on a guide right now where we we actually run Jupyter notebooks on your computer mm -hmm. with Python. You know, and you can have CUDA or whatever installed mm -hmm. in Jupyter mm -hmm. networks. And then using a USB to I squared C converter, you stream data directly in. Nice. So you yeah. don't have to deal with this, like record the data in the microcontroller and then transfer it to the computer and then like, you know, keep Absolutely. doing that. Yeah. You record yeah. directly and then you can actually do the training directly on the computer so as well. That is awesome, yeah. So yeah. like, I'm just, it, so it's like, it's all kind of coming together, but like going back to this like machine learning TensorFlow, it's like, it's so early, it feels like 90s era programming. I'm like, wow, like I remember it, what it was like to have to deal with such a slow Well, that's why it's such a good a time to start doing cycle. stuff. Like, it really does. Yeah, 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 picking yeah, up yeah. some hardware from Particle or Adafruit, you get to do IoT stuff. You mm -hmm. get to and do, it's cutting edge. You get and to edge, do it's sharp. Python stuff. You Very get to sharp, do it'll cut. You get to yeah, do machine yeah. learning stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's not, you know, we have a, a, a fairly mature web world Mm -hmm. Where it's like, okay, like here's all the frameworks, and it's like it's very specific on how a website works, and like here's these things. But the cool thing is, at anything you do, you're the first person to do it. You might be the first one. <laughs> Absolutely, you're which the first is cool, and to also, break it that way. exactly, yeah. yeah. Also, a, sign, a recipe for spending a whole lot of time. I know, but I feel, work, I feel you know? like we've learned, you know, I've learned a lot, and, and I also have been jumping oh, yeah, around, yeah. like I, we're doing, you know, machine learning on a Raspberry Pi, where you're actually running TensorFlow or TensorFlow Lite, yeah, and that yeah. those are getting much, much faster, and I think, you know, there's, Bluetooth capability on the Raspberry Pi could be interesting, like what kind of 
you know, combo of TensorFlow Lite microcontrollers on this versus Bluetooth sending data and mm -hmm. doing inference on the, you know, edge machine. So it's still not internet connected, but right. you have just a much more powerful inference engine right, for right. your Bluetooth mesh. Absolutely. I don't know if you can run Bluetooth mesh in blues. I don't know if that's possible. You, are you using actual Bluetooth mesh or is it still like the particle so mesh? So it's, it's, it is particle mesh, but it's thread-based mesh. So okay. it's the same, it's, it's open thread, so the same SDK or the stack that they ship in the NRF5284. That'd be interesting if, if you guys yeah. could, you know, talk to your developer, your developer relations. Yeah. You know, have it so you can use a Raspberry Pi computer to, to collect and send data within the mesh. Oh yeah, have that yeah, be part absolutely. Of it. That's a great idea. That's yeah. a cool, that'd yeah. be cool. That so does you guys have, don't you have like a particle for Raspberry Pi? We do, yeah, we do. It's a, it's, it's an unofficial sort of community yeah. support, but it does have the same sort of plugs to be able to tie into the particle device cloud and yeah. all that good stuff. So. Blues really sucks. Okay. All right, anyways. Well, we'll stick around because okay. we're going to yeah, continue yeah. to do our show. Great. And we're going to talk about some Python stuff. we got some new products. And we then got people lot, we got a lot of things. watching live come up with good yeah, questions. Yeah, load up your questions about IoT, about particle. Um, there's a couple feather questions, so we'll get to those at the end. So. Great, great. All right, here we okay. go. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah. All right, it's Python on hardware time. Blink up, blink up, blink up. Yeah, you'll see some familiar things here, Brandon. Awesome. So we are celebrating 200 libraries. Yay. It's actually 201 now. Probably. But yes. <laughs> At least 200. At so least 200. This is a big milestone for us. Uh, a lot of people, the reason they like CircuitPython is because everything just works. There's lots of libraries. Uh, similar to why folks adopt Feather if they want a GPS. Not only is there the hardware, but there's a software library for it. So. Uh, thank you to all our community contributors and our entire team who have been working on that 200 libraries. It's a big deal. Um, this is some experiments we're doing. This is called the Magic Light Bulb. It's a Bluetooth Low Energy Light Bulb, and we are controlling this via CircuitPython. So we're working through all the services that Bluetooth has, and we're getting our CircuitPython devices to work with it. Um, this is from a community member. Uh, they have a Feather and they're doing the hide and seek because they said, I don't have two circuit playground blue fruits, so I'll make uh, my Bluetooth feather and my uh, Bluetooth circuit playground. They have one of each. They have one of each. So the so closer proximity you get, sensing. Yeah, yeah, so it's a neat little proximity sensor with that. So you can do all this stuff with a feather and also with a circuit playground blue fruit. Arturo was busy, and this is a circuit Python driven cube and uh he was working on this cube i think it was from a fellow independent maker and after he assembled it he's like well i gotta test it so he was running circuit python on it so nice. toss that in there we have a new uh board that's supported in blinka and blinka's our circuit python for linux um Some this is a cool hole. yeah we, this is one of those usb it's your, a host adapter yeah it's a host adapter that it's a like a toolkit for lots of different yeah, things. Yeah, so this is actually kind of a a lower cost and more open and scriptable version of the kind of host adapters that um, the company that does Beagle, I can't remember their name, but um, they make these little adapters that basically you plug this into your USB computer and then you can run a Python script to control I squared C or SPI or GPIO devices. So they basically made one and uh, it's now CircuitPython Blinkit compatible which means that you can run all of those 200 CircuitPython libraries from your computer. So again, like if you want to automate testing or analysis of hardware from a computer, you don't want a microcontroller in the middle, you plug this in and it's USB in one end and then GPIO on the out. Okay. Uh, this is neat. This is a board that a person made and it is a random number generator. Yes, and there's a random pixels. Yes, <laughs> and you can, uh, it's based on a Trinket M0 and you can get the code on GitHub and you can learn a little bit more about it. Real, really random. On our site and on the newsletter. Um, this, we're gonna show a video later, but this is kind of neat. We're getting closer to being able to just run Python absolutely everywhere. And this is the MCP22221 USB to I2C converter. Yeah. That's your working on? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, we've had the FT232H, which again is a USB to GPIO converter, and we love the FT232, it's, it's wonderful, but it's a little expensive. Uh, it is fast, it does, um, I think it does high speed USB maybe, but it's, it's a very fast chip, but maybe you just want something that's low cost and simple. Uh, so the MCP2221A is like a dollar 25, and it gives you USB on one end, and then I2C on the other, and then we just, Got this working with Blinka as well. Carter and I, we, we had fun reverse engineering the USB protocol, which was not very well documented. Uh, but we got it working, and so you can, um, we're writing a couple guides now on how to use Jupyter Notebooks 
with this device, you can run CircuitPython libraries yeah. from Jupyter mm -hmm. Notebooks. And we'll have a little sneak peek video at the end of the show. Yes. Um, Make has a bunch of CircuitPython in it. Make, my old job. Uh, Make is back, by the way, and they had two things in it. This is Geekmom projects, and also in the toolbox section, it has our ruler that happens to be Python powered. The latest issue is called Fix Our Planet, and Make is now shipping magazines again. So that was good to see Make shipping and also some CircuitPython stuff. Ada boxes are out there. Don't forget, you can order one. Um, we just had a couple openings because uh, we're shipping right now, but folks are getting them. So um, look away if you don't know if you don't want to know what they are. <laughs> um, but there's some surprises. Special thanks to Matt and team who uh, post up the Melbourne MicroPython meetup. There is three months worth of videos and notes and more. Um, probably one of the the, the best resources and uh, the most active communities in the world of MicroPython. Join the Laura Alliance! Yay! Yay! Um, I'm always nervous when organizations have us as members. But this worked out. I would um, never join an alliance that would have yeah. me. <laughs> um, but we join. We do a lot of things with CircuitPython and the Things Network, and we have a lot of LoRa hardware. And so we just wanted to make sure that they knew about us, and we also had a way to get in contact with them as we do more stuff with LoRa. Um, speaking of, uh, Andreas, who did a great video about CircuitPython, just released a uh, video a couple days ago. Public LoRa satellite doesn't work. So there is a public LoRa satellite that, as it flies over, folks can, uh, I didn't know about can that. tune into that. Yeah. That's cool. It is pretty cool. Um, this is also neat. This is the Ant and MicroPython. So these folks, they have a, it's um, like a milling machine. PCB milling machine, and they wanted to show that they can make a, a fully it's functional a pie board. Yeah, fully functional uh, board that comes out of it. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Um, our friends at Numworks, they have a contest. So this is a MicroPython powered calculator. And if you do a cool script, um, you can win something. You you can draw, they have a drawing program with yeah, Python. You can, you okay. Yeah, you can actually just make little reindeers and all that stuff. The other thing that I found out is there is an emulator for iOS. So technically, you can get MicroPython on iOS, which is super weird, because normally I, Apple doesn't allow emulators inside but mm. for programming languages, but for this, they did. So I'll show that to you later. Yeah, I thought weird. that was cool. Um, this is a book that uh, Evan is working on at the Raspberry Pi Foundation. This is Coldly Classics, and this is all games that you can do uh, with like Pi Zero and uh, Pi Games, Pi Game, Pi yeah. Gamer Zero, and you can um, write, make your own uh, classic games. Well, that's cool. Melissa showed this off on the show until this week, but this is using Pillow and animated graphics to show this on a Charlie Plex bonnet. Folks are making their own games, so we have a bunch of edge badges out in the wild, and people are making their own. Uh, I think this Minesweeper, this is David Stell's game. They loaded the no, other game. This, this one, is, they wrote another one? They, yeah, okay. this is another one, and there's a whole well, series of games. Yeah, this is from Mr. Floaty or Floaty Guy. Floaty Guy? Okay. Yeah. Um, and the, speaking of edge badge, uh, Alex over at Hackster was at the ARM AIoT Summit, and uh, this is just another neat example. Uh, this is a Feather compatible, speaking of Feather earlier in the show. Um, this is a machine learning conference badge, so it can do voice recognition right on it. And then this is a Tamagotchi CircuitPython <laughs> device where you can uh, feed a little cat into different things and uh, powered by CircuitPython. This was a fun surprise. Um, someone made a really neat NeoPixel resin cube, and when you put it on a wireless charger, yep, it lights up. Ooh. That is cool. I kind of yeah. this is kind of thing I kind of imagine like it shows up in like the Planet of the Apes like <laughs> thousands of years later they're like Look, what is this technology we worship this cube <laughs> um, this is uh, a board that allows you to do conversions from the Quick Two wire to Circuit Python Blinka yeah somebody made an a, they made Blinka compatible libraries for the Quick Two wire boards this company. Uh, went out of business, I think, where they, they closed shop. But they were making Raspberry Pi accessories, like hardware accessories that were kits. Um, and so somebody, uh, we already have libraries for most of these things, like this chip, I think, is the MCP yeah. or PCF something, something. So we have a library for this chip already. So they just wrote up examples using Blinka because I think the quick to wire libraries might be uh, not Python 3 compatible or something. Okay. Um Handheld game design workshops are starting up at STEM Cell Robotics. This is in Norwell, Massachusetts. If you have a person in your life, especially a young person, who would like to take these courses, we have all the information on our site. Uh, one of the things that is important to us when we start CircuitPython is can artists use it? Well, uh, this artist, who folks may remember from um, a previous project where they took a um, recalled toy and had the recalled toy with a Pi portal on it that 
did a um, broadcast of all the recall toys. Um, this is called Engineered Sandwich, a small rechargeable freestanding light emitting sculpture. It's 3D printed, um, it fits between two little uh, wood buns and a circuit python uh, script controls randomly, uh, RGB LEDs, so another cool little art project. Um, we like artists being able to do stuff they want with light. Also, a um, couple guides and more. There's an MQTT uh, data logging zero to hero with circuit python and MQTT, that's over at Hackster. The orange pie is still cranking along. This is another feather compatible. Um, Bluefruit is getting out in the world, and so what people are starting to do with it is make Bluetooth control dog collars. Well, that's a good so, idea. Yeah, so this dog has its own Bluetooth uh, collar that you can control with a circuit background, Bluefruit Express, and or your phone. Um, this was some of the tests we were doing. This is the TFT Gizmo, the circuit playground, uh, Bluefruit, and uh, we were able to get some connections, so I took some quick photos. Um, if you zoom in really close, you can see the food delivery that I had ordered is late, and it told me that on my little device. Good. And <laughs> that is it for Python on hardware. Lots of libraries. Week, yeah. Up to 250 soon. Okay. All right, time travel. Look around the world, makers, hackers, artists, engineers. Uh, Brandon, I'm going to ask you, do you have any events coming up? You said you were doing something in January. Where are you going to be? So I'm going to be in London, actually, at a conference called NDC London. Okay. And uh, I am giving a talk on machine learning at the edge. So I'm going to do some demos on oh, cool. machine learning with the Google Coral and then similar demos to this. I'm going to expand some of the stuff around mesh and oh, great. edge based. And, and uh, so. folks, if they're in London or they're thinking of going, how do they find out about this? The con it's at ndclondon.com. Got it. Yeah, uh, is the website. And then we okay. have also some workshops coming up uh, throughout the year. That's been actually something we've had a lot of fun doing the last couple of years. It's just. 101, IoT 101 workshops with folks, Good. developers all around the country. One of the things so. I like about Particle is um, they're engaged in the community mm -hmm. and they're doing courses and classes. They do um, uh, events. And so keep it up. Thank I think, you. I think Thank that, yeah, it's important that. because yeah, yeah. there's a lot of IoT companies and it's like we're in stealth mode and like you can't, there's nothing you can find out about it and they hide the pricing. And you know, you yeah, have to sign yeah, up, and yeah, now yeah. like a salesperson's calling you forever. Right, right. So yeah, keep 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 that up. Thank you. Um, we do have one note. So we're about to uh, hire some folks. So we usually put this on the jobs board. I thought I'd mention it. So Brian, if you know anybody, um, we have an opening on our I/O team. Um, so if anybody out there uh, who really likes Ruby on Rails and Node, um, drop me an email. PT at Adafruit. Uh, our Adafruit IoT service is doing really good. Um, we haven't had any downtime or crashes. It's super solid. It's boring as far as maintaining servers, which is good. We that is good. More. But we want to add a bunch more features, yeah. so we're looking to expand the team and more. So anyone who really likes Ruby on Rails and Node, that's uh, that's and that's IoT, as we get. Yeah, yeah. and uh, look at all the projects and more on. Uh, they get to build cool first. hardware yeah. and uh, hear about neat people doing fun stuff with yeah. your stuff. But uh, the good news is that we don't do enterprise levels, so you don't have to be worried about getting called up at three in the morning. That's right. Why is, <laughs> why is it down? You'll never. That doesn't happen. You'll not. You'll not be on call. Yeah. No um, pager duty for you. That's yeah. No pager, no pager duty. <laughs> no, we don't um, do it. I mean, like we're kind of like, oh hey, sometime could you like maybe check the server, but like no rush. Yeah. So uh, we'll put up the job description soon and all that. But um, this is for our super fans who watch the show. Um, if you're interested in that. Um, other other bits of, of time travel and more. Um, getting the word out for our friends over at Cambridge Press and uh, Horowitz and Hill. The X chapters are out. If you go to x.artofelectronics.com, you can see some of the sample chapters and more. We should have these in the store soon. And they're on uh, a boat. They're on a boat <laughs> oh, on their way awesome. here. And uh, also check out the interview that Lady Ada did. Um, we're an open source hardware company. It's true. It's true. And you know how you know? Um, we well, do contests with we birds. Do, we could do, yeah, <laughs> well, we could do all sorts of fun stuff because we don't have proprietary things that people can't play with and do neat stuff with. So, um, speaking of Feather, and this is going to be good for a Particle, I think, too, because um, this is a Take Flight with Feather contest. There's mm -hmm. over 53 entries. And these are all really good designs. There's the open There's book like project GPS, in there, like a full sonars. on, a full on Kindle. Open book project yeah, it's just one. like that okay, so cool. Yeah, it's like yeah. all right, here you go. That's yeah. a feather. Um, but every type of wireless protocol, every type of like drone, like air, sea, land, like you name it. There's a feather that goes for it. So um, check that out on Hackaday.io, mm. and um, we're going to be uh, working with Hackaday and DigiKey to figure out which ones are the most manufacturable, and we're going to make them. Next up, uh, Lady Ada, there are 2,074 guides. 
That's right. What is on the big board this week? Okay, today we have a guest guide to Comfy Canvas 101. It's like a guide on how to use Raspberry Pis and LEDs to make like kind of these cool interactive, like literally canvases that you plug in. Um, we have the guide for the DigiKey IoT Studio Mini Smart Home. So you want to do a home automation project, but you don't want to actually get on a ladder. Uh, well, well, we had a kit, and then we'll, we'll show off the kit. Yeah. And this guide that you uh, put together, and you can automate this home. But it's a small cardboard home. A little home. tiny home. It's a little tiny home. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of nice because uh, it's a lot easier, and uh, you know, your significant other won't be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Why I, are you ripping out drywall? By the way, I, one of the things um, I was going to talk to you off there, but why? It doesn't matter. You're here. Um, <laughs> I think this would be a neat idea for Particle to do, where you'd get like a, a, a bunch of parts and uh, things and make your own miniature Oh smart yes. Home. Oh yes. That way, it's not Absolutely. as daunting. It's just like, hey, like here, just For get sure. the lights to turn on. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. have a motion sensor and have that sent to the cloud. I right? love Something that. Like yeah. That. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah. I, I could I could show you after this. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. What else you got? Okay. We also have um, Pi Portal voice controlled smart switch and time display. So it's it's a Pi Portal that displays the time. So that's handy. You want to know what time it is, but you can also use if this and that and an Alexa or Google Voice skill. So you can say like, hey Alexa, turn on the lights or something, and um, that is detected by your Alexa or your Google Home pod thingy, and it's sent uh, through the internet to if this and that, that then sends a message to different IO that the Pi Portal will read, and then it can control hardware. So basically you can do voice controlled hardware. It's totally not on the edge because it has to do all that voice computation in the cloud, um, but it's pretty fast, and you can do very powerful stuff with voice control that's hard to do on uh, an edge device. And you know you don't have to run Linux for this, you just use the Pi Portal. Yeah. And then if this and that does the um, transmit between Alexa and your device for you. Also we got the Unicorn Christmas Stocking. Uh, it's a Circuit Playground make code project from um, Aaron. And it's a craft project where you make this beautiful purple hello, uh, uh, stocking with um, like a jewel in the horn, which is really nice. And these like wavy iridescent eyes and hair and uh, it has a circuit playground express inside with the rainbow codes it's a great crafting project no soldering uh, it's really easy it's a really good beginner project especially if you got a circuit playground as a gift gift this holiday season we have the guide that goes with the video for circuit playground s is for soldering that video came out last week and uh, we also have the holiday icicle lights with flares this is a twist on the ooze master 3000 uh, where um, Philby has used his LED magic to make these uh, NeoPixel strips kind of emulate um, dripping icicles, but way better than those cheap drippy icicles that you get. These actually have like different speeds and brightnesses and then uh, droplets at the bottom. Uh, so we showed how to craft this together using just everyday uh, NeoPixel strips. Uh, yeah, and then I thought that one be, would be fun to IoTize where it'll only turn on and drip if it's actually cold enough. That's and cool. it's rainy yeah, enough. Yeah. So that way you can start to combine these projects. Absolutely. It's like, you know, putting the animations is one thing, but like, oh, like, I want to know if it's cold enough. And maybe you can sense that locally, or you can just have that data yeah, delivered. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. 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 Uh, and then, of course, you can make either white, but you can make them dripping red blood or dripping green ooze. We have the Adabox 14 guide. Uh, read that if and only if you have the Adabox 14 in hand. Don't read it before you get the box. It's not allowed. Yeah. You'll be you'll be put on the Santa naughty list. Uh oh, I've already spoiled myself. Yeah, yeah so I, I already yeah, did yeah. that. Shh. Oh, sorry. It's okay. And then uh, Circuit Playground Blue Fruit Hide and Seek. So if you have multiple Circuit Playground Blue Fruits or uh, Blue Fruit devices, you can uh, play a hide and seek radio game using advertising strength detection. Also a good demo. A lot of people want to do like when two things are close, I want something to happen. When they're far, you can use the uh, Bluetooth radio module to do that. That's our guides. Okay. And uh, Brandon, I, I, I'll mention this because um, I correspond with Zach once well. If you mm -hmm. ever feel like there's a, a guide that you want to put on the learn system mm -hmm. for a particle, uh, let us know. Oh, no fun. Um, especially if right. it's you know combining some cool mm -hmm. stuff. We're always we're always uh, looking to have companies um, help get the word out on some of the things they want to do. Yeah, great. Uh, Thank uh, you. And or just send me a link to one that you have on your site. Yeah, get sure. One of those work out. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have 2,074 guides, and we'll have more next week. All right. Well, it's like 2,100. That's right. Um, we'll run this show a little late if you can continue to stick around. Is that all right? Absolutely. You can't happy go anywhere. To. I have your suitcase over there. Yeah, yeah no, I'm happy to. Well, right. we locked the door. That's yeah. why the fire alarm so, went off. Okay. Uh, so let's do some Adafruit factory footage.
Okay, and it wouldn't be made New York City factory footage without the camera outside where the pick and place is. As you can tell, New York's under construction. Yeah, they're really demolishing so that building. Disney, CBS, and Disney and or Google just bought up a bunch of places around us. So um, they're just tearing it all down. Um, all right, 3D printing. A little programming note, no Pedro are off for live shows until the end of the year. However, that doesn't mean we're not doing lots of cool 3D printing. So uh, we've been working on this <laughs> for a while. Uh, we just finished it right before the show. And this is uh, maybe like, I don't know, 15 different people all worked on this. We wanted to have um, an update to our goggle project. Um, it was Arduino, now it's CircuitPython. We wanted to update it, and then when we saw, and we were going to do that anyways, but then when we were watching Watchmen and Regina King's character, Sister Knight, had these goggles, we're like, we got to do it. Um, Ashley, who works here, normally dresses up in cloaks and stuff like that anyways, mm. can do backflips, it's cool. Um, and so we said, well, we should just do this. So this is our, this is our world That's premiere, awesome. hot off the press, of our uh, Watchmen goggles. Starring uh, Ashley. Starring Ashley. So here we go. What's up, folks? In this project, we're building NeoPixel goggles inspired by HBO's Watchmen. The LED animations look really cool, and you can control them with a rotary encoder. There's four different modes, and you can change up the speed, colors, and brightness. The rotary encoder has a built-in switch, so you can adjust the settings and cycle through the different modes. The design is made up of 3D printed add-ons that fit over a pair of costume goggles. You can actually see through them, so they're safe to wear. The 3D printed covers actually keep the light away from your eyes. An elastic headband makes it much more comfortable to wear, and it can be adjusted so they'll stay nice and tight. The code was written in CircuitPython, so it makes customizing much easier. Go to the CircuitPython site to see all of the supported hardware and download the latest version for your board. This uses the Trinket M0, which is one of the tiniest boards supported in CircuitPython. You can double press the reset button to get into the bootloader mode. Then just drag and drop a file onto the boot drive. The board automatically flashes the firmware and works like a USB drive so all of your code and libraries are easily accessible. With the Moo Python editor, you can customize the settings and use the built-in Zero REPL to debug your code. Check out the Trinket Learn Guide for full breakdown on the CircuitPython bootloader. You can update your bootloader by following the guide and downloading the latest version. CircuitPython makes it easier to maintain the code and we think these type of projects make it easier to learn and build from. You can get the parts to build this project, links are in the description. The 3D printed parts are designed for PLA and NinjaFlex filament. Start by wiring up the NeoPixel rings. Here we're using silicone covered stranded core wire. It comes as ribbon cable so it can be split apart at the ends but still work as a single cable. This keeps the wires tidy and it makes the project a bit more organized. The two rings are wired together with a bit of heat shrink tubing to insulate the solder joints. A LiPo backpack is used for recharging the battery over the micro USB port on the Trinket M0. You can use a pair of flush diagonal cutters to snip the trace using the mounting hole as an anchor. This enables the circuit to be turned on and off. The LiPo backpack is soldered to the bottom of the Trinket M0 using header pins to keep it supported. The rotary encoder is wired to the Trinket M0 using more silicone cover ribbon cable. There's a few pieces to the costume goggles that can easily be taken apart. The nose bridge is replaced with a strap that is built into the NinjaFlex case. Additional pieces fit over the eye cups and are secured with screw-on covers. The NeoPixel rings are press fitted into the 3D printed holders that snap fit into the goggles. The circuit and battery are housed in the case right above the nose bridge. The rotary encoder is panel mounted on the side and secured in place with the covers. A lid for the case is also printed in NinjaFlex so it can be press fitted into the enclosure. Be sure to check out the guide for a full tutorial on how to build this project. We hope this gets folks using CircuitPython in their projects. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. week when I paint myself in full blue body paint and float and uh, kill racists with my mind. <laughs>
So that's next week. We're working on that video. I'm um, an egg. Yeah. And uh, we have one sped up. Um, this is like a, th this is science fiction uh, dream week here. I know. Because we have a sped up Jawa. This is the future that I've always yeah. wanted. This is, <laughs> well, it, you know what's happening is our projects are turning into like, the, we don't get a chance to watch a lot of TV, but watch them we have to. And then we but wait till the Dune movie comes out, man. Mandalorian good. we have to, because like, mm. it's like, oh, it's, we it's have required. to. It's required, yeah. So yeah. Uh, here's, here's. We can't a, just 3D print a Yoda every week, though. Yeah, here's a 3D printed <laughs> uh, Jawa. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops, sorry. TV! We'll return in January, but we'll have some videos and more. Um, gift guides, we have them if you go to adafruit.com slash explore. Um, we've got a bunch. We're even doing more probably this week yeah. or so. And um, any of the stuff you saw so far, if it's stock particle ML is the code. We already had particle as a code, so I had to use particle ML. Because mm, I was yeah. here on the show not too long ago. Um, Lady Ada, it's time. Okay. Ready? <laughs> That's your, that's your nine inch nails. Look, I don't have a drum machine here. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can. Right. There's no um, acapella nine inch nails. First up, um, if you like procrastinating, um, you can do that. It's fine. Uh, but you might have to give a gift. So give an Adafruit gift certificate. You can print out these cool things. We made this like, it looks like hologram looking money. And uh, it's the gift that gives. So you can get an Adafruit gift certificate. It is quite popular. Yeah. Because you know, there's so many products, you don't know exactly what somebody wants. That's right. They'll just, you just pick print it, it out and give it to them, and they'll be like, thank you, that's exactly what I wanted. So you could do that. Um, but as far as physical things, that okay. you can buy right now, a button. A button. <laughs> this is a uh, NFC and tag button. So mm. it's a uh, NFC tag, an RFID tag that has two holes in it, so it can be sewn on. It's actually kind of designed to be a laundry button. So you can uh, sew it onto like a laundry bag, and then that's how they identify oh, the bag, you know, because they it, it stays with it, and you can launder, you know, it, or you can, you know, attach to some fabric thing. Yeah. Um, so it actually can survive uh, very hot water, so it's like 200 washes, but it's also just handy because it's very durable, and again, it has these two holes that make it easy to mount it to something. So it's an N tag, I think two one three, I don't exactly remember, but uh, it's a kind of modern NFC tag. You can store some data in it. Uh, and then read it with a yeah. wireless so reader. 13.56 megahertz RFID NFC, mm -hmm. solo button NTAG213. Yeah, and tag. All right. Uh, we have a USB C right angle adapter. This yeah. does exactly what you think. I needed one of these. Yeah, you want it to go up, you want to go down because it's reversible. Don't forget, you can go either way. You can yeah. go left or right, unlike m most USB adapters, which you have to have one of each. Uh, this is just the right angle adapter. It connects, there's no electronics inside of the wires. So you can use it with whatever USB-C device you want. It just connects all the pins from one end to the other. That's it, straight through. Yeah, all right, more buttons. Mm, so we have these fun buttons. Um, this is a five pack of buttons that are STEMA compatible. They have a JST pH connector on them and they come with wires as well. So it's kind of a full pack and it means you can do a solder free mountable um, button interface. And I'll show them on the overhead because they're kind of, they're, they're low cost, but you know what? They work really well. So each button has a cap you get one of you get five different colors. I think it's white, yellow, red, blue, black. And then on this side, you get a, a connector that uh, plugs in very nicely and securely here. You can remove it, but it, it stays nice and solid. And then you can plug it into a breadboard or your Arduino or whatever you want. And uh, it's like a, like a six to eight inch long cable. Um, just means that you can have like a, a button on a cable uh, quite easily. Um, and you have little mounting holes as well. Uh, there's even a pull-up resistor here. So if you uh, connect the red wire to the voltage you want to the, have the pull-up to, 
when you uh, have the button open, the signal wire will be at this voltage, pulled up. When you press the button, um, the signal wire goes to ground, just like any other tactile button. And like I said, you get a pack of five. So, you know, it's handy, I think, when you want to build interfaces that are off of breadboard. Yeah, and one thing this is good for Team Particle is um, because you went with Feather and Featherwing, you get all the things that are STEMA compatible mm -hmm. that go on top. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we did was we looked around and we're like, okay, there's Grove, there's Quick, there's Gravity. And we had a STEMA uh, connection system that we wanted to do, but we wanted to make sure it was the most compatible. Mm -hmm. So if you have a particle and you use a feather with a STEMA connector, you can use any Grove things, you can use Quick, you can use Gravity. Absolutely. So like more stuff, and you've probably seen like there's there's enough of these sensors out there Absolutely. Yeah. that and a lot of people don't want to solder. Even if right. you're even if you're in like a um, a startup where you're doing hardware, like you're you're just looking to quickly like almost Lego yeah. something together. Yeah, we've seen that as well. A lot of people just they want to not want to mess with jumper wires, not necessarily ready to start yeah. soldering yet, but get something they can plug in quickly and go. So we'll cool. have we'll have a bunch more stem and we're working on a bunch of cool stuff. Let's okay. Try. What else you got? Play data. Next up, there's this neat motor. Um, so it's a DC geared motor, it's a 1 to 20 motor, uh, so it's geared down, so that's quite nice, it's, it's nice and, and strong, uh, it doesn't go that fast, I think it's about 400 RPM max, uh, with 7 volt power, but you can give it 5 volt power and it works uh, well as, with that as well, and you can PWM it with an H bridge, and what's neat is on the end is a uh, magnetic encoder wheel, mm. and two Hall effect sensors, and a cable, so again this makes it really easy to do uh, encoder-based motor projects. So we have motors, but a lot of the low-cost motors don't have an encoder, and so you don't know how fast they're going or which direction they're spinning. As you start doing more and more robotics, that becomes important. So um, over here, let me show this. So on the end here, you have this free-spinning uh, wheel, and then here are the two uh, magnetic sensors. What's nice is you know, no matter what uh, the temperature is or what the light level is, these will always work. Uh, they don't get dirty like um, optical encoders. So if you plug this in, here I've got my uh, Feather M4, uh, and it's connected to this motor driver, which uh, has an H bridge, which is controlling the motor direction and speed. You can see it spinning. And then I have the two encoder wires coming out and connecting to GPIO on the Feather through this uh, Feather coupler. And then uh, the OLED is printing out the speed. So as I spin up the motor, it goes faster and faster. You can see I can calculate the RPM, kind of up to about 400, and then it slows down, and then it'll spin the other direction. So it's one nice thing about having uh, two encoders is you can tell both the direction and the speed. Um, and this lets you do much more advanced control. Um, and if you have two motors, you can drive straight because you, you can tell cool. the speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like, I, I'm just looking at this. Of course you can just pop on particle and now you're do, you're either transmitting this stuff or you're controlling it like that's, yeah that's mm -hmm. a, that's a smart, and you can use this as a model i mean what this, are these referred to i haven't no really these are encoder it. motors yeah. so it's nice that the encoder is just already on the back you don't have to usually you have to um add this on or you're spending a lot but these are only you know like you know 12 13 bucks and no, it basically yeah. comes with everything ready to go so this is a, a nice little and then of course you know you can unplug this cable so uh, you can mount this as you desired and then uh, reattach the cable when you're okay. ready. The so. question was, uh, can the gearbox be removed from the gear DC motor with the mag encoder? Yeah, I mean, it looks like it bolts on. I haven't done it, but this is clearly the motor and this is clearly the gearbox. It looks like yeah. you could probably remove it and then, yeah, you're going to have to, I don't know what shaft is on the other end, but then this is, this is definitely the, the back end of it. But most people don't want an ungeared motor. You usually want it and a 1 to 20 gearing is a yeah. pretty good amount. Yeah, you know, they're not that expensive, so it's probably worth experimenting. Yeah. Taking apart. And, okay. and if people like these, you know, I'll stock more. Uh, this is just something I wanted to, uh, to start yeah, with. Yeah, this is cool. All right, so there you go. So now you've got uh, some precision motor action. Mm -hmm. All right. Motor encoder. Next up. You have a feather wing. So this is not on purpose. It's coincidental. It's feather night. But it is feather night. Um, Scott actually wanted this because he's doing so much eating stuff with CircuitPython that I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get you one of these. It's a... Uh, one of like our e-ink friends, but instead of a breadboard friendly, it's meant to go on a feather and it works with all of our feathers. It uses SPI and a couple GPIO and go in the overhead, you can see live. You can connect it to these low cost, but very popular uh, e-ink displays that have a standard 24 pin connector. They're what's 
thankful is they all use the same connector pin out. So whether you're using like the one inch ones or the four and a half inch ones or even the seven inch ones, uh, they all have the same connector. We have a pretty good power supply on here, SD card if you want to uh, display images like here. And uh, for the devices, the feathers that don't have a lot of RAM, we have a built-in SPI SRAM chip that you can use to buffer the display. Because one thing about E-Inks is that mm -hmm. you have to write the entire display at once. Uh, so this is like you write it and then you tell it, okay, refresh. And then you go into shutdown mode and then you can't read pixels out and you can't read, write just one pixel. You have to write the entire display at once. Um, that's pretty common. But uh, that said, it's you know, very easy to attach any e-ink display and you can start experimenting with uh, e-ink configuration using your Feather. So it's a Feather friend. Yeah, the other thing I like is this shows up, when we do Circuit Python stuff, it just shows up as a drive and you just drag and drop bitmaps, mm -hmm. um, which is not normal. Like normally it's complicated and terrible to do e-ink stuff and like you're, you're compiling things, but just dragging and dropping an image and then it just shows up is kind of nice. So we got that going on. Okay. Next up, we have coming soon. It's a giant hand with a it, giant phone. No. no, it's a small <laughs> house with a standard hand, a standard phone. So these are uh, the DigiKey IoT smart home kits, and you can uh, use DigiKey IoT Studio, which we have a guide that we published on. Yeah. Uh, that's it's coming out very soon, and uh, we'll also do a video on how to use uh, DigiKey yeah, IoT absolutely. Studio with a yeah, bunch of different good. feathers uh, to read sensors, send them to the cloud, use um, their mobile app creator to do either Bluetooth low energy data or Wi-Fi data transmission. Uh, so this kit's gonna be coming out soon, uh, but you can sign up if you're interested. It kinda has everything you need. There's a little bit of soldering required because you're gonna have to attach the feathers to header and then plug them in. Oh, is that uh, a little door sensor? Yeah, there's a door oh, sensor. Cool. Uh, there's a HVAC fan. Um, there's a relay so you can control the fan with the relay. Uh, there's a temperature sensor and a motion sensor, uh, an air quality, humidity, barometric pressure, uh, yeah, an air quality gas sensor. So it's kind of like an all-in-one home IoT kit, but you don't have to mess with your home. You just mess with this small house. Okay. Big and small news tonight. Yes. We have the Pi Portal Titano and the Pi Portal Pint. So people like the Pi Portal, which we released about right. a year ago. Uh, Big. And now... Small, small, big and small. Big. So we'll show all three of them because there's there's yeah. three in the actual. I was gonna, I was gonna, sh I was just gonna show the big one, and then I was gonna like one more thing. One more thing. And then like the little one. <laughs> but um, you know, I just get bad. It's fine. So uh, I'll show them on the overhead. So there's now three different pipe portals, and I'll explain the differences between them. So um, this is the original pipe portal. So the Pi Portal Pint is actually the easiest to understand. It's actually the same exact hardware, just smaller. This is a 3.2 inch screen, this is a 2.4 inch screen. It's the same chip, it's the same Wi-Fi, it's the same SD card. The only thing we took out was the temperature sensor. Um, so it just isn't on the I squared C bus, but everything else is identical. So the code that you run is identical. Like if you have a UF2 or CircuitPython code, it's exactly the same because it's the same resolution, same chip, same everything. So the pint is just, it's just shrink grade down, yeah. but otherwise identical display driver and orientation and all that good stuff. Um, the Pi Portal Titano is a little bit different because to get a larger screen, we uh, updated the display to be a 3.5 inch TFT, which is 320 by 240 instead of, sorry, it's 480 by 320, not 320 by 240. So it's actually twice as many pixels. And you can actually kind of see that because on here, you see the text is a little bit blocky, like you can actually see the, the pixels. And here, I actually am using a larger font, but the pitch of the pixels is much finer, so the, you don't see the pixels as much because they're closer together and it has a smoother look. Although for some reason it looks like it's, it's not actually flickering in real life, it's just the, the camera it makes it look yeah. like it's flickering, but it's looking fine to me. Um, and there's a Trent Reznor quote, so that's, that's on brand. Um, so when you write code for this, the Wi-Fi chip is the same, and the processor is the same, and the, you know, the buzzer is the same, but the b display is a little bit different. So when you have graphics, like I had to redo this background graphic, instead of 320 by 240, I had to redraw it to be 320 by 480. So you have to redo your graphics to be larger, otherwise they'll only take up like this part of the screen because they yeah. actually are higher resolution graphics. And we upgraded it to be a USB-C connector. So yeah. that's kind of Everyone nice. says, what about USB-C? We did it. 
So yeah, this was one, this one, the pipe portal pint's actually a little bit older. We didn't quite get that out till now. Yeah. But uh, the USB-C is what we're using on our, our modern boards. And yeah, it's, it's a much nicer, larger screen. But trade-off is uh, you're gonna have to review your graphics to account for the larger screen. Okay, and then on, on your wrist, someone said, can you put the pint above your wrist just to show like roughly what size that is? Like that? Yeah, it's, so you're not a large person. It's but wrist you, size. Yeah. This is my hand. So this is the pint, this is the pie portal, Yeah. and this is the titano. Yeah. So, and then so, we have yeah. an image. The pint is quite small. Yeah, so, you know. It's a small screen we could get with that that still had a touch screen. Python powered wireless, all in those different sizes. And uh, with that, okay. with that is uh, that's new product. Yay! Okay, do you want to yes. do the uh, recap? Let's do the recap. Okay, first thing. All right, we've got an end tag laundry button. So you have an end tag tag. It's got two holes in it. You can sew it onto things. We have a USB-C right angle adapter. It goes left, it goes right. It's a USB adapter. That's what it does. Five buttons, five different colors with JST semi connectors. You can plug them into breadboards and headers. Really handy for making uh, portable little button wires. A, a DC motor with one to 20 gear uh, gear down, and it comes with a dual magnetic encoder on the back. Uh, you just read the encoder values out and you can determine the speed and direction of the motor. And it's built right in, very convenient. The e-ink feather friend uh, plugs on top of any feather and allows you to drive common uh, e-ink displays up to you know whatever seven and a half inch displays that use SPI. Uh, comes with SD card and SPI SRAM as well. Coming soon, we have the DigiKey IoT uh, studio home kit so you can make your own IOT home project without messing with your home it comes with feathers and sensors and relays and motors and door sensors so you can basically make a full home automation kit with inputs and outputs and sensing elements uh, using both the web application version and the mobile application version of Digikey IOT studio and not one, but two new Pi Portals, the Pi Portal Titano, which uh, has a much bigger 3.5 inch 480 by 320 pixel TFT, as well as the much cuter and smaller Pi Portal Pint, which has a 320 by 240 screen, just like the original uh, Pi Portal, but it's much smaller. It's only 2.4 inches instead of 3.2. Uh, so you can see all three here, different uh, arrangement of the Pi Portal family. Beast mode is next. That's new products. Okay, we'll do a couple top secrets. Um, folks okay. can head over to um, Discord and ask your questions. I'll load up a few as we get going. Um, you can ask them to Particle, ask them to Our Lady Ada. Uh, first up, this is, uh, I was working on this today, so I made this little thing and I'm like, I tweeted at Basecamp. I'm like, hey Basecamp, look, I have this thing that now tells me when I have a Basecamp thing I have to do. And they said, that's really great, you're blowing our minds. However, change the logo, please, because they just did a new logo, so it's, it's fine. And then they said, wow, you did that really fast. I'm like, aha, so that was kind of fun. Um, the other thing I did was, um, as soon as I get all the pie portals, I put animated GIFs on them of Columbo eating a sandwich. So I want to play that. I feel like I learned something, but I don't know why. That's right. And then uh, last up, we have a little stem of video that um, shows that you were talking about earlier in the show about getting Python on lots of different things and being able to do sensors. Hey, what is this? Hey, everybody. It's Stemma Sunday, and I took the classic APDS 9960 proximity color gesture sensor, and I made a cute little Stemma breakout board for it. That's so cute, so you can plug and play it. No soldering required. And also over the weekend, Carter and I finished up support for the MCP2221. This is like a $1.25 USB to I2C converter. So you can see this is connected to my computer, the USB-C cable. And I plugged in an accelerometer and a gesture sensor here. I'm testing. And what's neat is 
it now works in Move because it's just USB. So this is actually running on my computer, connected through USB to those sensors, and I can press play. And then as I move my hand up and down over the gesture sensor, you see the data is plotting. So what's neat is there's no Arduino or microcontroller involved. It's just directly into my PC. And I can try different sensors. So here's a demo with the accelerometer. And again, I move the accelerometer and data is coming into Python directly for plotting and analysis. So I think this is really powerful because you can write all your code and you don't have to deal with a separate microcontroller, especially if you want to do like powerful machine learning or data analysis where you need to have NumPy or something to do that analysis. I think this is pretty neat. And uh, this is a preview of the stuff we're working on. STEM Sunday. Okay, okay. So we will see you over on Discord right now. Um, here's some questions. I'm going to rapid fire these. Okay, Are you we're ready, ready. Brennan? I, yeah, hope it, uh, I hope it's why isn't Phil wearing his particle shirt. <laughs> I am. I have the special edition black oh, it's just one. Black, it's black on black. <laughs> okay. Can you tell? Um, and I also have that particle tattoo. I know. Oh, oh, nice. oh. Awesome. Yeah, I got it right there. Look, yeah. it was a crazy summer I know. in Daytona. Okay. <laughs> um, so the particle boron, um, is it able to make uh, phone calls and send texts? No, because the, the, the SIM card, the eSIM that we have inside of the devices in the plan are meant for low-level IoT specific payloads. Yeah. Got it. And then um, we get this question a lot because we have um, IoT devices. Any th mm -hmm. thoughts, plans around 5G? Uh, many right. thoughts about 5G. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Is it real? <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's the challenge. If 5G is in this place right now where there is the marketing vision of, I, of 5G from a lot of uh, mobile operators and there's the reality of 5G, which is not maybe quite ready for prime time in a lot of cases. We are paying attention to it, but I think the bigger thing that we're seeing from our customers is as 2G, 3G are sunsetted that we have better, you know, we have consistent LTE support everywhere it's available, as well as M1, CAT M1 support in Europe. Okay. Uh, and just, so what we're trying to look for is sort of the best option available in the given markets that we're, that we're working in. And when 5G gets to that point where it is a reality that we can support. We're definitely paying attention to that. Yeah. It's tough because yeah. like 2G is being sunsetted, but it is still the really, most yeah. available. It it's everywhere. Years. It's everywhere, absolutely. And it's yeah. cheap. Yeah. A lot of mission critical infrastructure runs on it. I don't think I, there's, <laughs> yeah. Wait, actually, yeah. I think there's so much on 2G. I think they're actually going to not be able to shut it down. There's just a million. It's smart devices. to say, yeah. it's smart to like freak people out and say, we're going to end this. I think they'll increase the prices, but I think they can never really shut it down. There's, there's so much stuff. This is like, it is actually the, like people like to talk about Y2K. This is actually Y2K because <laughs> we don't even know what's on 2G. Yeah, that's true. There's yeah. a lot right? of like, the water pump that gets there, rid of all the water in the there subway. There is absolutely like, like everything, just, everything that's on cellular yeah. that was that's more than five years old is it's on 2G. Yeah, yeah, and that's absolutely. millions of devices. Yeah, they haven't updated them. Are you kidding? No okay, way. if someone wanted to get started, which um, particle should they start with? Oh, great question. So I, I would think for for most of the folks that are watching tonight, I would recommend starting with the Argon, the Wi-Fi. Okay. device um, you know folks that are doing scale deployments are largely using cellular but because they're both feather devices you can yeah. start with Wi-Fi Wi-Fi is definitely the most Wi-Fi you friendly. have it there yeah. with you yeah. you don't want to like okay like do I have a good connection or something you don't yeah. Do those, yeah, yeah. Uh, troubleshooting yeah. That. yeah absolutely okay um, and then one thing I thought I'd mention is if y'all ever wanted to do a channel or a meetup in discord uh, feel yeah. free to. Running a Discord server you have to have a big community yeah, and like sure. moderators and everything so one, one of the things we do is uh, for, for companies that we're, we're cool with, we'll just say, hey, do you want to just make a channel? So if you ever want to make a part of the yeah. channel. Yeah, DigiKey has a channel with Yeah, us. DigiKey has one. We, we, we did one with... Um, yeah, I love that idea. With yeah. uh, Supply... Uh, supply uh, with, uh, No, uh, sorry, Crowd Supply. Crowd Supply. Crowd we did one. Um, okay, uh, next up. Uh, any platform IO support for the STM32 F405 Feather in the works? They it's have. supported by STM32 Duino. So whatever STM32 Duino supports, it. it's what in Arduino we support it. Is the pint the same size as the Feather TFT? It's the, yes, it's 2.4 inches. So it's the exact same TFT display. Okay. Um, yep, as people notice, we are getting closer to being able to do smart uh, watch prototyping. <laughs> that, is, that is one of the goals. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a yeah. small, it's a big watch. It's getting there. Uh -huh. um, okay, when replacing the two LiPo batteries in a device with two random that have the same milliamp rating, is there only a problem when charging them in a the device, or can there also be problems when operating the device? 
Boy, it really depends on what it is you're doing. Yeah. I, I, you know, if it's if it's something that you can get replacement batteries for, just get a replacement battery. Yeah. Um, now, we're, now that we're selling the Sphere RVR, um, are we going to have any guides or things where you join Circuit Python and other Adafruit products work together with it? Yes. Yeah. Um, we have an uh, email to them because there's protocol stuff that we have to do. But we yeah, want to be they're able to slowly documenting that. stuff too. It's like it's it's happening. Yeah. Okay. Another a vote for particle on Discord. So. I'd say let's do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when you get Absolutely. back, drop us a note. Yeah. We could just have uh, you could do like open hours. Mm -hmm. Let people know when you're there. Um, we have moderators and stuff we can keep yeah, an eye on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Great. But that might be neat for folks to even self-organize, like mm -hmm. have a particle, virtual particle meetup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Definitely. if y'all are working on projects, or you seem to be doing the prototypes and, and projects, come on the show and tell, mm -hmm. and show oh, yeah. off and show off the latest. Okay, I think that's going to be it, uh, Lady Ada. Do you want to do a giveaway? Yes, yeah, do a giveaway. What do you want to give away? Well, I thought we'd actually give away a. Uh, Particle argon kit. That you sounds like a good idea. You want to do that? We have to. Yeah. Well, stores, I'm giving so. Rand one of these pie, pie portals. So. Yeah. So sorry, folks. Okay. <laughs> okay so we have one of the starter kits. I don't remember the PID though, but it's a, we'll it's get, a starter kit. We'll get the PID. Yeah. Okay. So uh, all you have to do to enter is uh, first, never have won something on the show before. Only one winner per my lifetime. Mm -hmm. The first person to call the phone number and answer the three magical questions will win a particle argon starter kit. Uh, the first question is, what's your name? The second question is, where are you calling from? And the third question is, what's a project you're working on or you want to work on? Answer those th three things, and then if you send an email. Which one did you want to give away? It was, uh, keep going, the particle this argon one? kit. Yes. Oh, yeah. 3993. Okay. So I'm going to put this in Discord. Yeah. So this, is, this is what folks are. Oh, thank you for putting it in. Oh, thank you. Okay. So um, what do they have to do to win? All I have to do is call this phone number. But you have to decode it from letters into numbers. Yeah, it's not that hard. But you can do it. Call us number. Okay. Free Argon kit will be yours. It's dead. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to put the phone number in in case um, folks don't know how to decode the secrets. OK. <laughs> Somebody wants this thing. The magical Radio Shack phone is. Yeah. Okay. Ahoy, ahoy. Hello. Hello. Ahoy, ahoy. Hello there. Is there somebody there? Is this Adafruit? Yes, you have called Ask Engineer and you've won a fabulous prize. But you have to answer. Oh my god! No, wait, wait. You have to answer the three uh -huh. magical questions. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Charlene and I'm calling from San Francisco. Okay, Charlene from San Francisco. Well, that's actually where Particle's from, so that's kind of a good thing. Congratulations, you won a Particle Argon starter kit from us. We're going to send it to you. All you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T at adafruit.com, and say, hey, it's Charlene from San Francisco, and I want a product number 3993, and they'll send that to you. Awesome. Wow. Sweet. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, also, thank you hello, Brandon. Oh, hi, Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Uh, I thought that I know Charlotte. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what is she, get, what is she working on? What's the, project? What's the project you're working on you want to work on? I hope it isn't that you work at Particle, because it's like, we're not supposed to allow that. <laughs> oh, no, I, I don't. Okay. Um, but the, the project that I worked on the latest is this uh, watch winder, watch so like an automatic watch. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, it's it's just a way to like keep your your automatic watch uh, going. Yeah. Uh, even if you're not wearing it. That's cool. All right. Well, I'm gonna totally build that for all my Rolexes <laughs> that I own. No, I don't really own. Them. All right. Well, don't forget to email support at adafruit.com. S u p p o r t. Say it's Charlene from Francisco. We'll send you out the product three nine nine three Argon kit, and uh, then you'll have something to talk to Brandon about next time you see him. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, thank you for so coming. Much. Have a great night. I love Adafruit. Oh, yeah. We love oh, you, wow. too. Bye. Yay. That's a love. Okay. All right. Cool. That watch winder project of hers is really cool. All right. Actually. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's our show for tonight. Thank okay, you so cool. much, Brandon, for being yeah, part of this. Thank you all for having me. Send, send our regards to everyone. And also, special thanks uh, for Zach. He's been a friend of the company from the beginning. And it's always cool to do stuff together. And uh, congratulations on the latest round of funding, too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good Definitely. stuff. Good to see good companies doing good. Um, so we'll be here next week. Uh, yep. We'll be doing show and tell, unboxing. Unboxing. But we'll be around in the chat. And then uh, Christmas Day we'll be around, and then New Year's Day we're going to be around. Because so we don't we have will... lives, and we have alarm yeah. companies that call, we... so you can't go anywhere. can't go on vacation. I, it's, the, it's like house arrest. 
It's a llama rest. I have a GPS on me, and I can't go more than five. It's a particle, here. actually. Um, <laughs> so uh, the code is particle ML. That'll be going all the way up to midnight tonight, or when I remember to turn it off. And uh, special thanks to all of our eight for team members. Thank you, Cara, in the chat. Thank you, to Cara. Thank Slack. you, Cara. Thank you, all the folks on Slack and all the folks on Discord and all of the community members and all of our employees. Thanks for keeping everything going today, tonight, and all this year with us. And we will see everybody next week. Here is your moment of Zener. Good night, everybody.